Good afternoon, everyone. The February 7th, 2018 meeting of the Thousand Oaks Council on Aging will now come to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And may we now have roll call from our city analyst. Please say here or present when I call your name. Chair Gorbach. Here. Vice Chair Allen. Present. Commissioner Burt. Here. Commissioner Fotheringham. Here. Commissioner Gitt. Present. Commissioner Gorbach. Here. Commissioner Hagee. Here. Commissioner Maria. Here. Commissioner Mortimer. Here. And Commissioner Posta. Here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now is the time in our meeting for public comments, and I have one public speaker card from Andrea Gallagher. Would you join us up at the podium at the mic, please? <coughs> Hello. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, my name is Andrea Gallagher. I'm the president of Senior Concerns, um, a 43-year-old nonprofit in Thousand Oaks. And um, I wanted to share a couple of things with you today. One of the first ones is we just recently went through a renovation. We actually had um, a brand new floor put on, which is the first time it's ever this product has been in the United States. It's a fully sustainable product. It's made of five ingredients, cork, limestone, vegetable oil, linseed oil, and pigment. And it feels like cork underneath, and it's really soft. Um, so we'd love you to come over. We're going to have a grand opening at some point. We've also had some painting and some roofing done and a number of other things. So after uh, 43 years, it's nice to have a little bit of a of an, a new outfit, an, out, an uplift. Um, I do. We do have a few needs, though, so I just wanted to shout those out to the community. We actually need our trees trimmed, so if we have any tree trimmers in the community that would love to donate some services, that would be fantastic. We also need the outside of our building painted, as well as we've done half the roof, but we need the other half done. So if those are some things that anybody uh, would like to talk to Senior Concerns about, we would be tremendously honored with the help. I also wanted to talk today about our Caregiver Recognition Day. This is the third one we've had um, in the community, and it will be Friday, March 2nd. It's at Los Robles Greens. It's from 9.30 in the morning till 1.30 in the afternoon. So who should attend this event? Anyone who is caring for an aging loved one. It doesn't have to be that your aging loved one lives in this community. They, you could be a remote caregiver. The um, opportunity for the day is to express our appreciation and support and love and care for our family caregivers in the community. Um, it's not quite, you know, the Ellen generous give the audience a million dollars or the Oprah give everybody a car, but it is a pretty amazing event. Every participant, it's free by the way, and every participant will leave with a goodie bag valued at over $200 and it's just a lovely day of um, convening and communing with others. It's not heavy on education by any um, uh, stretch of the imagination. It's just really a lovely day to get some respite and to celebrate. So you can sign up uh, for this event and you do need to pre-register. Uh, you can call Senior Concerns at 805-497-0189 four, um, or you can um, send us an email at Dana at SeniorConcerns.org. Either way you can sign up and certainly you can do it online too at SeniorConcerns.org. Anyway, I invite you, uh, any uh, family caregivers out in the community, and when I say family, you could be caring for a neighbor, a friend, a brother, a sister, doesn't matter. Um, anyway, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Andrea. I'd now like to call on Commissioner Posta for agency reports. Uh, yeah, we have a couple of agency reports today. Uh, we have Julie Spivak, which is the director of the uh, Caneo Senior Volunteer Program, is going to be here to tell us all about uh, events coming up and things that they're doing over there. Julie? Thank you. 
Um, I, today, I just want to talk about our, the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program has uh, started its free income tax preparation, and that started this past Monday, and it runs through uh, Monday, April 16th, and it is Monday through Friday from 8.30 until 4 p.m., and it, it is at the Conejo Creek South Community Building, which is where the soccer fields are. There's one building over there with a the red roof, and um, um, we have tax preparers over there, as well as on Wednesdays at the Newbury Park Library, also from 8.30 until 4 p.m. And this is a, um, all of our volunteers are IRS uh, certified and trained, and the um, service is walk-ins only, and um, no appointments taken. So if you have questions about this, uh, give us a call at the CSVP office at 805-381-2742. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah, next we have Patty Ham. She's a director of the Global Adult, Adult Community Center, has been doing a great job over there. And she, uh, she was running late today because she spent all morning trying to cut back on the number of activities that she could report. <laughs> or we'd have been here for about two hours just listening to her. Uh, what special things you got here for the uh, next month, Patty? Well, I um, wanted to make an announcement that Right now, we're currently recruiting for our Global Senior Center Commissioners. Um, that recruitment application is due February 23rd. You must be age 50 plus and reside in the Conejo Recreation and Park District boundaries. And we are so blessed and honored to have these senior volunteers be on our commission. They um, volunteer their time and they actually run the bingo program which is their biggest revenue source at Global Center and because of the commissioners time and um, money that they give to the center we're able to make our programs even better and less costly for seniors all of our events that we have our monthly themed events um, are because the commissioners give us money for those events so if you're interested in coming and volunteering um, f to make the lives of seniors better at the Global Adult Community Center, I encourage you to come pick up an application at the Global Center, um, or you could pick one up at uh, Conejo Recreation and Park District um, main office on Hillcrest. And that application is due, remind you, uh, February 23rd at 5 p.m. So this month, um, we actually have a Mardi Gras event this Saturday, but unfortunately it's already sold out. But I just wanted to mention it to let you know what kind of events we're having. So it's going to be fun. We're going to have uh, Louisiana style food, uh, dancing of course, and uh, Mardi Gras fun um, at that event. Maybe next time at our next event next month, of course, will be St. Patrick's Day uh, if you miss this one. Um, we have uh, this Saturday, we have a group of teens coming to the Global Center to help out with any senior who has a uh, technological device that they need help with. And all you, there's no appointment needed. It's from 12 to 3. Just show up. And these very helpful teens who know technology uh, devices very well will help you in any way that they can. And that's it. <laughs> I was told to cut back, John. <laughs> thank you anyway, Patty. Okay, John, thank you very much. And now we have a liaison report with the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging, and that's me. <laughs> so I, along with Commissioner um, Hagee and Commissioner Fotheringham, attend meetings in Ventura at the, um, the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging every other month. And they have published a new book that I really wanted to tell you about. And it's going to be up on your screen, the cover, and it's called Live Well. And this is a publication that replaces um, one that you have seen on um, magazine stands outside of grocery stores that was called Elder Care. This one is fabulous. You need to pick this up. I have mine right on my desk 
kind of standing up next to my other important publications on my desk because you're going to want to grab a copy of this. They have them over at the Goebel Center, and perhaps they will be out on magazine stands. I'm not sure, but they are at the Goebel Center. Yes, and it's free. But the resources in here are wonderful. They are well-documented and well-researched. And I'll just go through the table of contents just a bit. You'll find resources on caregiving, for instance, and on the senior nutrition program, on financial and legal services, on health insurance, on housing, on other types of medical services, along with a number of very interesting articles throughout the magazine. So pick one of these up and keep it. I mean, I mean, this could even be, it's, it's a really lovely cover. This could be, you know, on your coffee table. You're going to want to keep this out and available for the next, the next year until the next one comes out. Okay? So that's all I have to say on that. Thank you. And now I would like to call on Vice Chair Allen, who will um, lead us in the commissioner reports. Oh, thank you. I'd like to first introduce uh, Commissioner Forthingham to give a, his report on caregiving. All right, thank you. Um, I would like to uh, continue a discussion that I started last month on resources available to family caregivers. Um, there's been a lot of attention to the needs of family caregivers because most of us who are in that role uh, tend to us to and tend to underestimate uh, that how how difficult it can be and how much we need in the way of support. Uh, from others. And I want to focus today on uh, a, a resource that was introduced in the uh, session today, and that's senior concerns. Uh, one of the things that Andrea Gallagher did not mention to you is that all of their um, services that are provided by senior concerns are free to the public except for two, and those are the adult daycare and meals on meals programs and so forth. But they have a very strong caregiver support center, and it's an excellent first stop for people who are either become family caregivers or expect that they may become family caregivers in the near future. One of the things you want to do is to go there, make an appointment, go in and get a consultation. Tell them what your particular situation is, and they can guide you in terms of what other resources are available in our community that uh, can be helpful to you. They also have a number of support groups for family caregivers, and I highly recommend that anybody who's a family caregiver get involved in a support group. You can get involved in one through your church or through some other organization you belong to, but if you don't have any of those, uh, Senior Concerns can link you up with one of the several support groups that they uh, sponsor and so forth. So uh, I want to encourage that as the first stop and so forth. Where your second stop occurs may depend upon what you tell them when you uh, consult with them. And so we'll continue this program next month. Thank you, great, yes. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Commissioner Burt for education. Hi. hi, hi. Last month in January, uh, I talked, I brought three resources in to uh, the council. Uh, Thousand Oaks Library, Cal Lutheran, and of course the Goebel Center. This month I'd like to talk further about a new one that I just came across. It's called Senior Center Without Walls. And um, it's actually headquartered in the Bay Area. And it's uh, they serve seniors in 35 different states across the country. And it's a non-denominational phone and online based program and ba and basically what you do is you can be sitting in your living room at home and just call in and you can get in on a number of different classes seminars things like that uh, you can play games you can go on virtual tours if you have internet some sort of internet connection uh, you can also meditate you can share a gratitude with somebody you can get support and probably the number one thing is that you can connect with another person and that's so important in our times and so uh, it's also available to low vision you know uh, people that are blind their materials are actually they do have it in braille they have it in uh, audio so it's uh, it's an interesting organization so how does this thing work uh, basically all you need to do is call in they have an 800 
877 number you need to register. You'll be asked some questions about that, your general demographics. Of course, they're going to ask for your email and your phone number. All activities, again, and classes that we bring to you are free of charge here. So uh, you obtain a calendar of what is available, the time to access that particular event, and the length of it. Uh, some activities are available online if you have computer access. Uh, if not, again, the, the, the wealth of them are, of course, on, phone, on the phone. All activities are listed in Pacific Time when you look at the, if you want to look at their website. They have a couple of program guidelines which I'd like to mention. The first one, of course, is confidentiality. You never should share. If you're going to be a part of this, don't share any of your personal information, of course. That's something that you don't have, private information. Only registered participants can access any of these classes. Of course, the views and opinions are not of the Senior Center Without Walls. They're your own, of course. Uh, they're not going to share your personal information without your consent. Uh, there are some phone and online etiquette, which I'd like to mention what they have. Uh, if you're going to be a part of this, the, all they're asking is, is that when you call in, please note the time that you're calling in and do it just before the, the meeting starts. It's not as good to come in mid-meeting. Mid there are about 12 participants. Each meeting that they have is going to last between 30 and 60 minutes. So there's a whole thing you can do all day long. Uh, there's always a facilitator on this particular on the meeting. They'll manage the meeting, and uh, of course, uh, arguing or directing any kind of remarks that might be hurtful or, of course, discouraged. There's a whole index of groups, and if you're looking at that particular uh, PowerPoint, I mean they have everything, you know, from armchair bing uh, armchair travel to bingo, book sharing, cancer, and other types of support improvisational comedy if you want to learn French German uh, or Spanish they have music memory classes there's course sports and writing workshops and as you can see you know all of those particular things I just kind of talk about a few of them uh, what I did before I brought it here to to the council uh, is I actually registered myself so I went through the process I wanted to be able to tell you a little bit about how easy it was I was uh, on the phone probably around 10 minutes. They asked me 10 different questions. Uh, they were all demographic in nature. They also stress, of course, you don't have to answer any question you feel uncomfortable with. Uh, I did not answer one of the questions that I didn't feel was you know, pertinent to what was going on, uh, and that have to, had to do with personal income. But you don't have to, you know, if you feel comfortable sharing that, great. So what happened was, is as soon as I was off the phone, an email pops into my, uh, you know, in my inbox, and it's from the Senior Center Without Walls, and they gave me a whole, they gave me an ID number, they gave me a list of classes that were gone going, the length of those classes, who the facilitator was, and I actually went in and I uh, went on one of their classes, which was called Advocacy Now. And uh, I went through that class. It was a 30-minute class. It was very interesting. And, and, and so uh, the process was handled totally over the phone. And um, I, thought it, I thought it was a very viable additional resource that is free of charge to the citizens of Thousand Oaks. Uh, that's a slide that shows you the states that they're in right now. They're continually expanding. <clears throat> And uh, if you want a little more information, please see me after the meeting. But it is a, another viable educational resource. And most importantly, it connects seniors, and it is free of charge. Thank you. Whoop. Next will be um, Commissioner Gitt talking about emergency preparedness. Sorry. Good afternoon. Can you go back a slide? Let's start with that one. So today I want to uh, talk about earthquake preparedness. Next slide, please. You might have seen some of these pictures. California has a history of earthquakes. If you were in San Francisco in the early 1900s, you might have seen this or a lot worse. Next slide. 
And there was some talk in the uh, 70s about uh, California falling into the sea and we were going to have desert land be beach property. This picture was actually, let's go back to that a little bit. This picture was actually painted on the side of a building in 1972 by um, a group of artists from Venice. They were called the Fine Arts Squad and their mission was to go around Southern California and paint murals on the sides of buildings. This one was on Butler and Santa Monica Boulevard. And uh, if you look at this carefully, you see that the over ramp uh, from the freeway has kind of broken off and there's kind of seawater at the bottom there. Uh, and the sign, which you can't read up on the top of the freeway, says Blythe, 10 miles. So um, this may be a little bit of a different view of what could happen in California, but the fact is that we live in an earthquake-prone area. Next slide, please. So we have a lot of data, and nobody can predict when the next earthquake is going to happen, but over the next 30 years, we have enough data to make some high-probability estimates. So in the next 30 years, 99.7% chance that there'll be a 6.7 magnitude or greater earthquake it will strike California. And the chances of a, a 7 or greater earthquake in Southern California is 75%. And the chance of a 7 or greater earthquake in Northern California is 76%. So that's kind of interesting. The next slide um, shows a report every day you can get a report on the internet at earthquaketrack.com and it will tell you how many uh, earthquakes are occurring in the uh, recent period there were 28 earthquakes in california in the past 24 hours 153 in the last seven days 696 in the last 30 days and uh, 8200 8, earthquakes in the past 365 days. So seismic experts agree, if not if, it's not if, but when the big one will occur. So what should you do to prepare? So with any uh, preparedness activity, you need to create a disaster preparedness plan, put together disaster supplies for your home, work, and car, and consider earthquake insurance to help you repair, replace, and rebuild, and recover if one does indeed hit in our area things to think about. Set aside some emergency supplies and make a plan for what you do at home before, during, and after a disaster. You could be without help for up to 72 hours or longer, and it could take as long as two or three weeks uh, before you get some of the things back that you're used to. Uh, Self-sufficiency during this time is key. Movement of the ground is seldom the actual cause of death or injury. Most casualties result from partial building collapse and falling objects and debris, such as toppling chimneys, falling bricks, ceiling plaster, light fixtures. Many of these conditions are easily preventable, but you have to think about them. Let's talk about the gas, because almost all of us use gas to heat our homes. And if you smell or hear a hissing sound after an earthquake, you really need to know how to shut the gas off in your house. Uh, you need a pipe wrench or an adjustable crescent wrench. And where the gas pipe comes out of the ground and goes into your meter, there's a valve. And uh, if it's on, the, uh, the, the nib on that valve is pointed up along the pipe. If it's off, and that's where you need to put that nib, you turn it so that it's parallel to the ground. That will shut off the gas. And if uh, you do have a leak, that will prevent your house from uh, burning if indeed there are some sparks. Next slide uh, talks about um, your master water heater or your master water valve. Um, everybody has a different kind of valve coming into their house, but near the front of your house, usually there's a shutoff valve. Sometimes it's round if you live in an older house. Um, if you live in a newer house, it may have a yellow handle like this on a 90 degree um, fixture that will turn off the water. If you have a leak inside your house, it's not going to take long for the water to do a lot of damage. So you really need to be able to turn off the water and uh, take that possibility out of the equation. Next slide uh, is talking about your electricity. Everybody has different kinds of electric boxes. Some in more modern houses have uh, circuit breaker boxes and at the bottom as shown in this picture is a master breaker. 
So if you see arcing or sparking going on, which could set your house on fire, uh, you need to be able to turn off those that master breaker. In older houses, this picture might look like a bunch of round fuses, and uh, you need to, and some tubular fuses. You need to be able to disconnect the master fuse that brings power into your house. Next slide. Um, of course, your family communications is, plan needs to be in place. Your family may not be together when a disaster strikes. You need to know how you'll contact one another, how you'll get back together. Um, you need to identify one or more out-of-town contacts. Be sure every family member knows their phone numbers. If you have a cell phone, put the numbers on your home page as ICE or in case of emergency, and uh, be prepared to call them and make sure they know that you might call them in case of an emergency. Uh, you also need to teach members of your family that have cell phones how to text because it may be far easier to get text messages through um, when the cell lines become overloaded rather than just being able to call. So finally, you need to be prepared for an earthquake. It's not if, it's when. Have an emergency contact plan, prepare your home, have an escape plan, listen to the authorities, evacuate if told to do so. Thank you. Thank you. The next uh, speaker will be Commissioner Maria on our wonderful Senior of the Year activity. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Um, just a reminder, we have our uh, 2018 Senior of the Year Award Banquet fast approaching. It's scheduled for June 7th at the Goebel Center, so mark your calendars. It's a really fun event, entertainment. It's a lot of fun. But what we need to do first before that is make sure that everybody's aware that we do have our nomination forms available for you to nominate Senior of the Year candidates. And you can find the form online at toaks.org backslash seniors, or you can call the senior services staff at 805-381-7362. And I would ask that you um, look into those nomination forms and act on them very quickly. The deadline uh, closes April 1st, so it seems like a ways away, but it creeps up on you fast. So we're looking forward to seeing those nominations. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. Great reports today. I appreciate that. And now is the time in our agenda for commissioner comments. And let's start down at my right. Any commissioner comments at this end of the desk? No, 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 no. Now we'll go this way. Yes, Vice Chair Allen. Yes. Oh. Thank you. I have uh, several. The first I'd like to do, let me just get this up on my, um, on my, Thing here uh, if you have fruit trees there is and you have a lot of fruit and you can't pick it any longer there is a wonderful website they will come the volunteers and I just signed up yesterday because I do have a few fruit trees and it's called foodforward.org and they will arrange for volunteers to come and pick your fruit for you and if you want to keep some of it for yourself that's okay too and it's just a wonderful thing as I drive around our wonderful city I see all this fruit hanging on trees that nobody is picking and me and my neighbor are one of them <laughs> And so, anyway, um, it's a wonderful organization. Again, that's foodforward.org. And uh, I hope uh, people will think of it. Uh, the next uh, one I have is there. there is a used shoes uh, donation going on for the Stepping Stones uh, horse uh, activity.org and they are having a shoe drive for so please consider donating your gently used shoes to us the stepping stones riding program is participating in a shoe drive to raise money to support their rescue horses all you need to do is collect and drop off your unused shoes it's very easy and I saw I was at class today at the Y and the Y up on Moor Park is one of the drop-off sites and there were several bags of shoes and I'm going to contribute to that. So uh, the the places right now they have listed are the Caneo Valley Y that's on Moore Park Road, and in Newberry Park they have a pickup at three eight. 43 San Felipe Drive. So if you're in Newberry Park, that's your uh, thing. And in Simi Valley, there's 33. 
O. Stonebrook. And it's uh, supported by Angel Bins, which is a, f a fundraising place that that will uh, do all the shoe stuff. Then the other thing that is uh, uh, in line with what uh, Commissioner Git was talking about is I just ordered a Groupon, a very good deal on Groupon. I'm not pushing Groupon, but for an earthquake preparedness kit, you can get it for one person, for two people, and it'll uh, it's very inexpensive, so I'm not going to push it, but if you Google uh, Groupon and uh, look for earthquake preparedness, uh, it's a very, a very good deal. And then the, the the last thing I have is the Caneo Valley Village, and, and Tony, I might be stealing Tony's thunder, is having a volunteer member recruitment. And you can call us. I'm a call manager, and you can call us and sign up. It's going to be at the Global Center on the 12th next Monday. Um, and uh, the number you can call to sign up, I just signed up some people yesterday, is 805 Three seven two one eight two six, and it's a wonderful organization, and it's people helping people, and they do things like call you every morning if you live alone, come visit you. A lot we do a lot of transportation if for people who can't, who really need help with transportation, and we have a lot of fun events. So please um, consider coming to our volunteer re and recruitment thing to activity to find out more. Thank you for listening. Great. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Allen. Do we have any other commissioner comments at this end? Let's start. No, 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 no. Okay. Commissioner Getz. So just to add to what Loretta was saying, the uh, Caneo Valley Village helps seniors stay in their homes for as long as possible and remain socially connected to our community. And so if you or anybody that you know is interested in uh, joining a group like that or wants to volunteer, please come to our recruitment meeting on the 12th of February at Goble. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gedd. And I would just like to um, uh, reiterate what I said. I just really appreciate all the work. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioners. I mean, these, these reports don't happen by themselves. You folks do a terrific job throughout the month doing the research and uh, developing the PowerPoints and then delivering the um, the information and also to all the other commissioners who help facilitate the meeting find you know find speakers it's um, it's a month's worth of work and it is it is sincerely appreciated so thank you thank you everyone um, our guest speaker was scheduled to be Dr. Fontana, a thoracic cardiac um, surgeon from Los Robles, but due to unforeseen circumstances, which happens with physicians once in a while, um, he will not be able to be with us. So at this point, we are going to adjourn the meeting today. And next month, let me just tell you, first of all, next month the meeting is going to be on March 7th, I think. Thank you the same because March, February, March, March 7th. And the topic is going to be navigating health care, again, with um, a member of the staff at Los Robles Hospital. So, um, boy, health care is something I've had a lot of recent re experience with, as I know many of you folks have. So this should be a really interesting um, topic. Again, our meeting will be 1 o'clock here in the boardroom at the Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza, a beautiful building. Please come join us, or you can watch it on television. And with that, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you all.